everyone! Clueless Crafts here with another easy clay animal tutorial. So let's get started. First up is a hippo, so I'm grabbing this ball of dark grey clay and rolling it into a thick log. I'm making one end more narrow, which gives us a separation between the hippo's body and head. Now I want this hippo to look a little bit more interesting, so taking a blade, I'm creating an opening for the hippo's mouth. I'm then prying it open with this flathead silicone tool. A little bit of smoothing and let's just close your mouth back up a bit. Then it's on to the legs. After rolling a ball into a log, I'm flattening the top edge where it will connect to the body. Once attached, all that's needed is a tool to blend the pieces together, or your finger, whichever works best for you. Now I don't really like the placement of the back legs here, but I end up correcting that later on. For now, let's finish attaching these legs and get started on his teeth. Super simple to make with just a ball of white clay split in half, but before those go in, we can't forget the tongue. Choose a nice light pink color, coincidentally the same color as Hippo's milk, and flatten that out before adding a faint line down the middle for the tongue indentation. Give the tongue a little trim, and it's good to go in, albeit a little reluctantly. But with the tongue in place, the teeth can follow suit. With the mouth done, I'm adding indents for eyes and moving on to the ears. Beginning with the small ball and squishing it flat, I create an indent in the center before cutting it in half. This is definitely my favorite way of making ears. I'm placing them pretty much directly behind the eyes, and this is where it finally starts looking like a real hippo. This is when I decide I can't stand his legs anymore, and I rip them off, placing them slightly further back. Not a big difference, but apparently enough to drive me to change them. After placing the tail and blending it out, I realize I forgot the hippo's eyes. Can't have a blind hippo, can we? And look at that, I forgot something else. I'm sure our hippo would also appreciate some nostrils. Okay, that's the last step, I swear. And didn't he turn out just the cutest? Following our first act is going to be a squirrel, a wonderful suggestion from one of you guys. Starting with the body, I'm pinching one end of the ball into a teardrop shape then just slightly flattening the top as this is where the head will sit. Now with the small white ball, I'm flattening that out with the roller until it's nice and thin. Then just gently placing the belly onto the body, smoothing the edges all the way around. I also give it a few rolls on the table to ensure a flush seam between the two. Let's move on to the limbs. I'll use two balls to roll out for the arms, and the other two will be flattened with my roller. Those will be for the hind legs as well as this ball of clay, which I am rolling out and cutting in half for the feet. Now let's just skip over to what the squirrel will be carrying, which will be an acorn. A light brown ball rolled out into a sort of egg shape will then have its top cut off, and that will be added to this dark brown ball, which I am making an indent in using my ball pointed tool. The indent wasn't quite big enough, so I upped the size and then it was perfect. Acorn top meet acorn bottom, and here's your hat. Okay, next component, the tail. I'm creating this by rolling out opposite ends of a ball until both ends are tapered. Once that's done, I'm choosing one end to be the bottom and flattening it out so that it can attach to the body easier later on. The other end will then become the tip of the tail, which only requires a light flick of the wrist for your tail to be complete. All right, it's time to make the head. Squirrels have small triangular heads, so keep that in mind as you roll out your ball into an egg-like shape. Next are the eye indents right in the middle, and a couple indents for my silicone tool to draw the nose. A pretty simple face. I'm using a small ball to create the ears, this time shaping it into a diamond shape before cutting down the middle. I added indents to the ears after cutting, but if you were smarter, you would do it before. Oh well. The ears turned out pretty difficult to attach, but I blame that on this clay being extremely soft. Every touch seemed to mess something else up. But with the head now attached to the body, the eyes can go in, oops, there. Tail is next, and it's looking really good. Then on goes the feet, followed by the legs, and bam, acorn, bam, arm, bam, another arm. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Just need to blend those arms out, and our squirrel is looking great. And after baking, this is our finished product. Let's move on to our next animal, the colorful parrot. Starting with the red ball, I'm rolling out the side I want to be the tail into a tapered end. And just so this accidentally doesn't turn into a snake, I'm bending the clay to separate the main body from the tail. Then just finishing off rolling the tail, and you should end up with something like this. I swear it'll eventually look like a bird. To help with that, I'm making a small cut in the tail, so it looks more like feathers. 
just kneading up the edges with a flat edge tool and bringing the line further up the body. And with that, let's move on to the wings. These wings will be three parts. First up is red, which I am flattening with my roller before splitting in half. Each of these halves will be the top third of the wing, just making it slightly more narrow and smoothing with my fingers before creating two indents on the flat side of the semicircle. I continue the line up slightly higher to mimic feather texture. The middle section of the wing will be a nice bright yellow. I'm flattening it again, though this time I'm stretching it a little longer before I cut it in half. And for this wing, we are making the indents on the rounded side of the semicircle. Here's a little comparison before and after sculpting. The last third of the wing will be blue, and it's almost made the same way as the yellow wing. The only difference is this time we are only making one indent instead of two, and pushing one feather up a little higher than the other. I'm also making the tops more narrow so the feathers fit underneath each other nicely. Time for assembly. Yellow goes on top of blue, and red goes on top of yellow, and push down so they are nice and snug together. Oh, would you look at that? It's feet o'clock. Taking some dark gray, I'm rolling that into a log I will then cut in half. Each half is going to be a foot, and each foot has three parts. So cut into thirds, leaving one third a little shorter than the other two. The two longer sections will be the front claws, leaving the last section to be the back claw. With that done, let's give our attention back to the body, where our parrot is longing for a face. Let's make the beak first. Taking a tan color, I'm rolling that into a cone until I'm happy with the length, then just trimming off the base so I have a nice flat surface to connect to. For the eyes, I have my ball of white clay I'm stretching with my fingers until it turns into a natural looking shape, or cutting that in half. Um, but don't cut it like that. Before adding to the face, you may notice I press the beak into the clay to leave an impression. That way I know where to place the eye patterns without needing to work around the beak. Now that those are blended out, we can make the bottom half of the beak. Using a small ball of black, I'm flattening it against my blade before placing it right under the beak impression we made earlier. Then we can attach the beak directly on top and curve it over the bottom half. Looking good. Now some indents for eyes and some black clay to go in them. And finally, our bird can be put together. Feet first, nice and easy, and a wing for each side making sure to line them up with each other at the front before placing. And just like that, our parrot is ready for the oven. Love how it turned out. So colorful. Finally, last but not least, is the highly requested lion. Starting with the ball of tan clay, I'm rolling that out into a thick log, making sure to slightly taper and curve the end I want to be the front. So you should end up with something like this. Next are the hind legs. Each leg needs two balls. The smaller ball will be rolled out into a log for a foot. The bigger ball has the upper leg. I'm attaching the upper legs to the body first, then placing the foot underneath, slightly more towards the front. Onto the front legs, just take a ball and roll it out into a long teardrop shape. I'm leaving the foot pretty big since this is a line we're talking about. Using the flat edge tool, I'm adding the toes before it's time to attach the legs to the body. I'm slightly lifting the body up as I place them so the lion will lay a little higher. More proud looking, I guess. Once both legs are on, you can blend them into the body, but it doesn't matter much as we plan on covering this up with the lion's mane later on. Well, I guess it's time to make the head. This took me a few tries to perfect, so don't beat yourself up if it doesn't look good at first. I'm pressing the sides and bottom to create a triangular shape. Once it looks like this, draw what you want the nose to go before continuing, as we are using this as our guide to sculpt the cheeks. After drawing a line from the nose straight down, start pushing the clay up in a curved motion. This is what it looked like at first after some rough sculpting, and this is what it looked like after taking my time to smooth everything out. To finish off the mouth, take a small ball, squish it a tiny bit, and press it under the nose. Gently blend out the edges and underneath, and I gotta say, I'm even surprised at how well this is turning out. Anyway, time to add the nose, which is a tiny piece of brown clay I pinched between my fingers to make a wide triangle. Then just place it in the indent we made earlier and squish it down. Oh, also forgot to make the tail earlier, so let's quickly make it now. I ended up making it a little too long for my liking, so I shortened it later off camera but you get the gist. For the tip of the tail, I'm using little rolled out pieces of brown clay to cover the entire end. We are getting into the final stages, so I'm placing our lion on some parchment paper so we can move our buddy around a lot easier. Using the same brown on the tail, we'll make a bunch of little pieces to add to the mane. 
and I mean a bunch. By the end, I only had two or three of those pieces left over. So before adding the head, I'm adding the first layer directly onto the body around the neck. Now let's take this ballpoint tool and create an indent for the head to sit. Don't push down too hard, just enough so the head can lay flat. Now when building this mane, I kept thinking that it wasn't going to look good. And the truth is, it probably won't until you're almost done. You just have to be patient and trust the process. Now let's figure out where the eyes are going to go before making the ears. Same process as all the other rounded ears I make. Roll down, squish flat, indent, and cut in half. For added flair, you can slightly curve the ears inward before placing. Now with the ears on, the last of the hair can be added. Alright, final step is to add the eyes and our line is ready for the oven. I am super proud of this one. Alright, that's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, let me know which one was your favorite. But other than that, hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all later. Bye!